Hi everyone, my name is Mario Loris. I am working with Epic Personnel Partners. I'm their safety coordinator, and today I'm gonna teach you guys about the reach truck. Um, this right here behind me is a crown reach truck, and basically what this is is utilized for lifting and taking product uh, as high as four to five stories up in the sky, okay? Um, and basically, this right here, single-handedly, happens to be our most dangerous piece of equipment, in my personal opinion. Um, so this is one that you definitely wanna take seriously, uh, as well as all the rest of our equipment, but just please make sure that this one in particular, um, that we always pay extra attention to our students during this class. So remember that when completing this, you're gonna to have to put your equipment number, which is found on the front, usually spray painted on the front of your equipment, um, on this side, sometimes it's on the side. Just make sure you're always putting it up top. You're gonna to go to your designated day, you're gonna to go to your shift, first, second, third, and you're gonna go down your checklist. You're gonna just walk around your equipment briefly. Um, you're gonna make sure that you lift your forks, put them down, make sure there's no hydraulic issues, check your tires, um, make sure you look at your dashboard, make sure there's no check engine lights, anything of the sort, uh, before you sign out this piece of equipment. Now, if you remember, um, every other piece of equipment in here, just like we train, the first thing you're gonna wanna go over is how everywhere in this facility that you're driving this equipment is treated like the rules of the road, which means you stop at all stop signs, you follow all the safety rules, you make sure you're wearing all your proper safety equipment, um, and you're always watching out for pedestrians and doing the right thing. We also have a specific direction of travel. Um, as you can see behind me here, the forks of this equipment, just like all the other equipment with forks, we never, ever, ever travel forks forward. The only time you should be going forks forward is when you're actually picking up or dropping off a load. Um, other than that, we always travel the opposite direction, which is forward, okay, where, where the forks are not in the front. So always make sure to go over that with your students before even beginning the class. All right. so. Before we go to mount this piece of equipment, there's one thing I wanna to bring to your attention and it is that every single reach truck operator has to have a pair of eye protection, okay? The reason being is 90% of the time on this equipment, the operator is gonna be looking up and moving product around up in the racking systems. There's plenty of debris, dust, or wood that can fall off and particles that can come right through your roll cage and fall right into your eyes. That's the last thing you want when you've got a thousand pounds in the air, okay? So uh, always make sure that all reach operators are using uh, safety eye protection. Now, on this piece of equipment, know that there's two ways that you could actually be on it, um, which means you actually have a seat um, that comes up like this. So if the operator decided, they could actually sit right here and have their feet on the pedals in front of them, and they could operate the vehicle sitting down. Or if they want, and most of the time they feel more comfortable um, by putting the seat down, uh, and once they put the seat down with this orange lever, it will allow the operator to just comfortably stand up while in the equipment so they can utilize and actually be able to move around and see more visually what they're working on. Now, once we've actually mounted this piece of equipment, you guys may recognize your dashboard just like the rest of the Crown equipment in this facility. You have these arrows and you have your screen here. Um, if you look down here to the right, you have uh, your on and off switch, which is like a little key ignition. So what you would wanna do is turn your ignition switch to the green dot, hold it for about a second. You're gonna hear that beep and you're gonna notice your dashboard light up. So what we'll do is wait for it to power cycle. It's getting its settings and its readings ready to go. And the first thing I'm gonna do is point out a couple things on your dash, which number one, you have your battery, okay? Your battery percentage here, it's gonna give you an exact reading of where your battery is with this piece of equipment. Never let it go too low. You always want this equipment to be changed out before it gets stranded somewhere in the facility. If you notice here, you have your poundage. This is actually really neat because based on what load you have on your forks, it'll tell you the amount of weight um, that you actually have on your forks, which is pretty neat. Above that, you have this double-sided arrow, okay? And if you look closely here, the double-sided arrow is actually the orientation on where your tires are. So always make sure as a reach driver, because you can't visually really see your tires from the outside of the vehicle, you wanna make sure you're looking at that arrow before you drive away from a tight space uh, to make sure you don't drive into a racking system or a wall or some product. Also notice here you have two buttons. The one button on the right, you have that little light symbol. This is just for your internal dome light here. Um, in case uh, reach operators are sitting here, they need to fill out paperwork or any documentation, they have an internal dome light they could utilize. 
They also have on this, I believe, um, this is an, an a additional fork option to where if you actually have your forks extended all the way up, this is a way that you could actually extend it a hair more than max percentage if needed be. Uh, this is something more for advanced reach drivers. I would not get too far into this in your reach class. Uh, maybe just briefly go over it. Uh, now, I would like to bring your attention to two joysticks on this equipment, which are the primary tools of how you move your forks and you drive uh, backwards and forwards your equipment. On the left here, you're going to notice this, this knob, and this knob is your steering wheel. Unlike other steering wheels on equipment here in Crown in this facility, what you got to realize is that this is all inverted. Okay, so what that means is it may look like I'm turning this to the right, but what I'm actually doing is turning the wheels to the left. Uh, and when I turn this actually to the left, I'm turning the wheels opposite to the right. So reach drivers have to have a huge respect for that because you can't just hop on here and think you're gonna go left and left and right and right because everything is inverted. So always be sure to let your students know about that first. Now, on the right side here, you're gonna notice you have this joystick. This joystick is primarily how you're going to control your vehicle going forward and backwards. Um, and it's as simple as moving the joystick away from you to go forks forward or moving the joystick towards you so we can move in the proper direction of travel, which is forward. Now, um, if I bring the camera down here and I'm going to show you guys the foot pedals. OK, so where I'm standing on this piece of equipment, I have uh, I have foot pedals that are up at about shin level right here and these are usually utilized when I'm when I'm using the seat so if I'm operating this piece of equipment sitting down these are the pedals that I would be utilizing if I'm standing up this is the weighted pedal that I have to have my body weight evenly distributed on in order for this vehicle to actually move so now that I have my vehicle distributed on that paddle if I go to move this joystick I will actually be moving the vehicle um, backwards or forwards. And then I would also like to point out that now I can show you the controls um, on the reach truck. So if I was to bring this joystick up towards the ceiling, I will be lifting the forks in the air, okay? If I was bringing the joystick down, I would be bringing the forks down, okay? Now, with my thumb, as you can see here, I have a horn. Always utilize your horn when you're in motion. And I have this thumb control here, okay? This thumb control is how I control the smaller movements with my forks. And as you can see here, there's a little photo. Um, this is the, going up and down on this thumb stick is how I would be able to tilt my forks um, forward and tilt my forks down if I needed to adjust in the air. And then also, I have to actually stick my forks and reach outwards or bring my forks back in. All I would have to do is with my thumb, rotate this knob forward and that'll bring the forks out. Or I could bring it back towards me and that's gonna bring back my forks all the way back into the truck. Now, remember that on the other side, you actually have a trigger, okay? Like a little gamer trigger. If you squeeze this trigger, this will allow you, instead of doing the reach motion we just did, to actually shift your forks left or to shift your forks right, okay? Now, if you're ever shifting your forks left or right, just note that there actually is um, arrows, and I'll show you. So we actually have arrows that will show us um, where we're shifting. So if we look right here, See those arrows on the back of my forks there? If I go ahead and squeeze that trigger and go ahead and shift left, I can line up those arrows uh, as, a, as a reach driver and I can understand that I have that back in the middle now. Now, before moving this piece of equipment, what I like to do is play the game just like the forklift and on the clamp truck with the controls, is you're gonna want your associate to get on here and basically get comfortable with the controls of the forks, which means you want them to get on here walk you through everything that you walk them through as far as starting the equipment, what the controls are, the pressure plates. And basically from here, you want your student to uh, get oriented with the equipment. So what that means is you want them to kind of play around, make sure they understand all the functions um, and how the thumb and the joysticks work. 
and basically let them just play around, fiddle with it for about a couple minutes. Don't have them actually move the reach truck. And uh, what you're gonna want them to do is when they're ready to let you know, and that's when the instructor should come up and play almost like an, a Simon Says. And what I would wanna do is, you know, give certain direct commands, like forks down, forks up, reach out, reach in, tilt down, tilt up, shift left, and shift right. And basically you're gonna to wanna to randomly give them all these directions, and basically as an instructor, you're gonna watch their hand motions, you're gonna watch how uh, comfortably they're executing those on the reach truck, and you wanna make sure they're just in a rhythm. Uh, if they're very lagged or very delayed, you want them to get a little more practice on this part, okay? Once they're comfortably on the reach truck, you just did your Simon Says, and so far so good, your student's doing great. So now we're ready to actually move this piece of equipment. Now, before moving the equipment, what I personally like to do is I tell my students, respect. Respect this piece of equipment. For a piece of equipment that is designed to lift thousands of pounds, stories in the sky, you wanna know that this piece of equipment weighs a lot. Um, in saying that, it is a large piece of equipment that moves on a dime. It can spin on a dime. If you overturn this piece of equipment, it'll basically just do a donut. So you wanna bring that to the attention of your associates and basically explain to them that we're not looking for speed, um, we're not looking for who's, who's the five-star reach driver, um, we just wanna make sure that they're understanding and they're comfortable with the controls. So safety first, remember always safety first. When moving this piece of equipment, the instructor should make sure that the student maintains control at all times and the instructor should have awareness on the driver at all times, okay? So once we're ready to move this, what I usually like to do is I'll set up cones or I would like to set up pallets and I set them up spaced out from each other and, and, and we start basing. Uh, you're gonna want them to do a couple, a, couple lefts, uh, a couple left turns all the way around the cones. You're gonna want them to do a couple right turns all the way around the cones until you as an instructor feel comfortable and until they as a student operator feel comfortable. So when moving this piece of equipment, what you're gonna wanna make sure is that the forks are lifted at least two to four inches off the ground, no higher and no lower. If it's lower, you're gonna scratch the floor. If it's higher, it becomes a safety issue. Remember, we do not move forks forward, so the first place that I will be moving um, is, is forward like this, which is backwards. So, make sure the reach driver always stays within the premises of the roll cage. We never want to see reach drivers extremely leaning out like this, because you are now protected from the roll cage. Once you see them make a couple turns, maybe throw in a figure eight, make sure that they understand of the reach truck. Once you feel your student is now comfortable with driving the reach truck, go ahead and have them walk you through the entire process from start to finish, and from there, have a great day.